What's going on ladies and gentlemen, many here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another quick video for today. Um, since I published the technique episodes quite a while ago, people have been asking me basically a lot of times um, how to actually practice technique, you know, how to get techniques into your routine, how to really ingrain them into the brain and use them in the right moment, so to say. And apart from just generally generating more experience, you know, getting more climbing meters in, which is, in my opinion, still what helps the most probably, you can also try to, um, you know, get in some technique-specific drills, so to say. And one option for that would be um, technique-specific problems. And we made that recently in this gym um, with a couple of technique-specific routes, really short routes. And what I think is important with such problems is that the technique is present there in a kind of repetitive manner, mechanically, so that you can really get a feeling, you know, get the flow of this technique going. This is also the main reason why we chose to use here solely top rope routes, so just really short, quick routes, which do not require a lot of, you know, thinking, a lot of brain capacity to clip quick draws and stuff like that, so that you can really concentrate fully, basically, on the technique, on executing the technique properly. The focus of this episode is going to be the barn door and its mechanics, um, and I'm going to probably release one or two more of these videos in the near future, because we've got quite a lot of more more routes regarding these topics, these technique topics going. But for now it's the barn door. And I think this is a very common mechanical problem in climbing generally. I see beginners struggling with that quite a lot that still don't have a very good feeling for, you know, the positioning of their extremities and the positioning of their center of gravity, which is one of the most important factors as we're going to see whether a barn door occurs or not. So Let's try to, to, to nail it down here, really. We've got two factors that determine the um, whether a barn door occurs or not. One, the position of the climber's contacts with the wall. That would be the hands and the feet grabbing, respectively stepping onto something, uh, relative to the position of the climber's center of gravity. And the second big factor that we've got here is the steepness of the wall. I think I've discussed this briefly in previous episodes, but it's not so easy to um, kind of predict whether a barn door is going to occur or not. It's not that black and white, but generally there are a few rules and we can say that the greatest threat, so to say, of a barn door is present when only one hand of the climber is grabbing onto something and only one foot of the climber is stepping onto something because, because then we've got this really determined axis around which the body could turn if the conditions allow it. Now, when we think about it, what would make the body turn around this axis? Now, first of all, if it's very steep, you know, if it's very steep and the center of gravity of the body is not not in line with that axis already, it's only logical that the body wants to, um, you know, balance out this mechanical disbalance of the system, so to say, and swing, uh, swing away from the wall, swing out of the wall and cause a barn door. However, as I said, it's not that black and white. Just because you have two extremities on the wall, that doesn't mean that your position cannot be stable. If the axis is leaning to a certain side, let's say it's leaning to the right side, if your center of gravity is positioned to the right of this axis, you still have quite a good chance to have a stable position, at least if the wall is not completely overhanging and pulling you away from it. By the way, a little side note, let's imagine we've got a completely slabby wall that you can almost lay onto. A barn door is very unlikely to occur in these situations because you really have to um, get your center of gravity away from the wall, actually. Maybe you want to step some foothold for... Uh, you know, from, from friction or something like that. This would theoretically make a barn door possible, but on slabby terrain, we've got um, quite, a, quite a good insurance against barn doors. And the more steep it gets, the more overhanging it gets in general, the more um, potential there is for a barn door to occur. On the other hand, just because all of your four extremities are grabbing or respectively stepping onto something, that doesn't necessarily mean that your position is stable. As we can clearly see um, when we take a look at this route here that we specifically designed for, so to say, the barn door mechanic training. As you can see, Torsten climbs up this slightly leaning to the right eret, and his only real footholds are these small little pebbles that are close to the left 
corner here and his only handhold since these footholds are really really small um, is the left arete itself so to say and as you can see he has really you know he's gotta climb slowly here very precise very balanced trying to balance out here um, this this swinging motion that of course occurs because all of his extremities are forced to grab something that is in one axis basically and he's got to be really careful to not get too far away from the wall with his center of gravity. Otherwise, he's going to swing out, so to say. And this is a classical example of having one axis that is formed by your extremities and having the center of gravity, you know, to the side from it, which basically enables a barn door. Now, in this example here, we've got a only very, very slightly overhanging wall. Otherwise, it would be almost impossible probably to climb this route without using the right corner as well for some oppositing heel hooks, so to say, that could um, equalize those forces. And this is something that is demonstrated quite well in this route, I think, which we um, designed specifically for training heel hooks and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, we've got here, again, really small pebbles, but also around the corners of this, um, this wall, so to say. And Thorsten is constantly um, resetting his heel hooks in order to be able to let one hand go, basically, and make the next move. So... Here we have just the opposite, you know, we have the we have access to both corners and that means we are always able to get a kind of an equalizing force allowing us to let one hand go without the fear of getting a barn door. Just imagine if you wouldn't have these hooks around the corner, it would be much harder to climb this route because every time you let go of one hand, your center of gravity is, um, you know, not in the right position relative to this axis <laughs> created by your extremities making a barn door possible so yeah i hope these really quick illustrations here of the barn door mechanics made this uh, mechanism somehow more visible or more understandable to you guys out there if you want a train technique then you know get on these really technique specific problems from time to time and really train these moves in kind of a repetitive motion a 45 degree system wall by the way can also be really good for creating technique circuits and stuff like that and technique um, specific problems but anyway that's it for this video guys i hope to see you really soon in the next one and i hope you have a great uh, time as well and bye